Hello, I'm putting my kind appeal for like button charity at the beginning of this video so it doesn't disrupt it halfway through. So if you if you could hit the like button below, I, I would really appreciate it. It actually does help me out a lot. Um, thanks and uh, mo moving moving on. Chances are you're here because either you just got a new drone or you've been using it, been shooting with it, then you sat down to check out your photos and realized, yikes. Yeah, they're probably not that good. Now, full disclosure, I am not a pro photographer, far from a pro aerial photographer, but I do have some experience and I definitely know that yikes feeling. So this video is going to be me simply giving my own advice from my experience on how to get better drone shots for all you beginners out there. Now these tips are gonna work for any drone, but they're especially helpful when you're flying an entry-level drone like the DJI Spark or the Mavic Mini. This is because beginner level drones tend to have a worse camera than more expensive ones. And while no drone is going to have a camera that really can compete with something like a DSLR, the weaknesses of cameras on drones, especially beginner drones, cannot be ignored. And while you might have a little more leeway with something like, say, a Mavic Pro 2, chances are you don't have that anyway if you're watching this video. Basically, you just need to treat a drone like you were filming on an iPhone. Their sensor sizes are all itty bitty, really tiny, small, and they have a limited aperture, which means that they will not do well in low light. This also means that you need to take extra care to expose your images properly, manually. No matter what drone you have, it should have manual controls in the app or computer system you're flying it with. Keep your ISO low to avoid noise in the video or photo and compensate with shutter speed. Now, there's always exceptions to the rule when you shouldn't touch shutter speed, etc. But in general, I never move my ISO above 100, maybe 400 max, but I usually just leave ISO at 100. It's simple that way. To be safe, in photography, I always take a picture that's underexposed, one that's properly exposed, and one that's overexposed. You'd be surprised how many times the properly exposed photo isn't actually the best one to edit. Now, a little known fact that I didn't realize until, well, relatively recently, is there's this nifty little wheel down at the bottom when you're adjusting your shutter speed and your ISO to help you properly expose the photo. Zero is supposedly perfect, and then any plus is overexposure, and any minus is underexposure. Now, because drones have small sensor sizes and low apertures generally, or high, apertures, very limited apertures. You're gonna need a good amount of light to properly expose your photo, but not too much. Namely, don't aim your drone at the sun because the sun is just gonna completely blow out your highlights, your shadows are gonna be invisible, and you're just gonna see, well, a great big shining ball of light in the sky. I've done this before plenty of times, and if you're going for that sunset or sunrise shot, by all means, completely disregard this tip because I mean, you kind of want to get a picture of the sun for sunrise. But in general, whenever you're shooting a subject or a landscape, you want the sun behind your camera so that it lights your subject and doesn't backlight your subject, blowing it out. Now, those are the technical tips, but what about artistic advice? Art is completely subjective. And what you're doing when you're flying around a drone, taking videos or photos, is creating art. That being said, there are simply some scientifically proven things to be more appealing to the eye than the other. Composition theory is way too large of a topic to cover today, but I suggest that you go watch some more videos about composition theory and composition in general, and then you just apply those theories or practices whenever you're taking pictures with your drone. Just because it's flying in the air doesn't mean you shouldn't treat it the same way you would treat your normal DSLR or mirrorless whatever main camera. That being said, I do have a few drone specific tips for you right now. Number one, take videos in video mode and photos in photo mode. Uh, <laughs> I have to admit that um, even though this is super obvious and you might be smacking yourself in the head right now if you're like me, I had no idea. I didn't realize that taking photos in photo mode gave you higher quality photos more pixels, and with the Spark at least it has a wider angle lens, like I, I didn't know that. For some reason I figured that just taking screenshots from the video itself were uh, equal to say taking a photo. This isn't true at all. Actually every single camera works this way. Photos, way higher quality than videos. Who knew? If you made this mistake too, leave a comment down below so we can at least be disappointed in ourselves together. 
Number two, this is video specific. When you're shooting videos and when you pull it into your edit, make sure that you add sound effects and ambient noise to match the drone footage. This will make your drone footage look way more real and immerse the viewer in the footage even more. If you need convincing, here's a clip without ambient noise compared to the clip with ambient noise. Massive difference. Currently, I'm using Artlist for music and sound effects, and I actually do really love it. I'm by no means going to give you the hard sell on one sound service versus the other, but I do have an affiliate link down below to get you two extra months added onto your Artlist subscription for free if you decide to go with Artlist. Personally, I really like Artlist because they have a whole set, a whole just slew of ambient noise sound effects that are absolutely perfect for drone shots. That being said, let's talk about tip number three aim the drone gimbal straight down. The top-down view is one of the most unique things a drone can achieve, so why not use it? Not everything needs to be an aerial landscape. And while those can look cool, I know at least my favorite photos are shot top-down. Number four, as with all outdoor photography, it is generally best to shoot during golden hour. When's golden hour? Well, golden hour is basically the hour after sunrise and the hour before sunset. You wanna have the sun really low on the horizon so you get a lot of awesome shadows. Like, well, if this is, if this is like the light, see how my hand is like casting a, 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 big, a big long shadow? I don't know if that makes any sense, but golden hour, shooting golden hour. Even in a pretty boring location, golden hour can make stuff look super cool. Now, finally, number five. Given the relatively short period of time you have to take photos, whether it be because your drone battery is dying or golden hour is running out, Photoshop is your friend. Or in my case, GIMP is my friend. Because it's the same as Photoshop and it's completely free. Anyway, learning image manipulation will up your photo game by a lot. You can remove leaves, cars, or an entire neighborhood. I'm still pretty new at this whole Photoshop thing, but I've already saved like five photos with it. Learn Photoshop or GIMP, probably GIMP, download GIMP. This isn't sponsored by GIMP, I just wanna save you a crap load of money. All right, that's all I've got for you for now. I really hope that this video was somewhat helpful for you in one way or another. If you did enjoy the video, consider subscribing or liking the video to help me out, I appreciate it. Until next time guys, happy flying and I'll see you later.